Today we're going to be making three text animations in After Effects. Let's start with the glitch animation. In After Effects, open up a new composition. You can go ahead and match my settings. Choose the text tool and type out whatever you want your text to say. Make sure you use a bold font so that you can see the effect. Center it and then we're going to go over to Effects and Presets and search for Displacement Map. After you find it, add it to your text. From here we'll need a glitch texture. In Finder, look for a glitch texture or video that you can use to apply to our displacement map. I'll link the one I used in the description down below. After you found your glitch, place it above your text layer and turn down the opacity all the way to zero. On your text layer, if you select the top displacement map layer, you can see the effect taking place on the text. Playing with the max horizontal displacement and the vertical displacement, you can kind of play around with the effect and make it more extreme or more controlled. We're going to need the glitch to be a little bit longer. I'm going to make the glitch a pre-composition and I'm going to change the composition settings to 30 seconds so that it matches the original video we made. There I'll just duplicate it a bunch of times so that it fills the time. After that just make sure on those duplicated files that the opacity is turned up so that you can still see the effect. Now we're going to animate in our effect. Go to the beginning of your timeline and place a keyframe for the max horizontal displacement and the max vertical displacement. Then we're going to go about a second in and add another keyframe there. Going back to the beginning of our timeline, we're going to stretch this effect out to about 200. But you can see that our text is a little skewed and not on the right axis. So what we're going to do is we're going to go forward, add a keyframe. And we're going to go back to the beginning of the timeline and we're going to move the position and just kind of get it lined up to where it was in the beginning. Now when we hit play, we can see that it stays in the same spot. Next, I'm going to play with the scale a little bit. I'm going to add a keyframe at the beginning and one at the end. And then going back to the beginning, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so that it just looks like it's getting bigger. Let's go ahead and add easy ease to all of these. and turn on motion blur. There you go, it's animating in, but I kind of want it to be a little bit more punchy. I'm gonna go into the grid and I'm just going to select these keyframes and I'm going to, I'm gonna play around with the speed. For this one, just keep playing around with it until you get it to a place that you like. This part is really based on preference. After we get our animation to a place that we like it, let's go ahead and pre-compose it. I'm going to name it text. We're going to pre-compose it with the glitch effect. And then we're going to add an echo effect. After that, we're going to duplicate our layer, go down to the bottom one and turn it red. Then we're going to move it forward a frame, duplicate it again, move it back a frame add a blue color to it and you can see that we get this really cool effect. Here's a quick way to make our text look even cooler. I have Premiere pulled up and I'm going to go over and grab the text that we just made, pull it into our timeline, go over to effect controls. I'm just going to scale it up until it pretty much fills the whole screen or most of it. I'm going to nest it. I'm going to name it text glitch one. Then I'm going to pull in one of our glitch effects. I'm going to put it underneath. I'm going to scale it up to 200. I'm going to search for track mat key, add it to the bottom, select the text which is on video layer number three. And now this video plays inside of text and you can add some more effects to it if you want it to look a little bit cooler like I'm going to add this one underneath it make sure you scale it up I'm in editing in 4k right now 
you have this cool effect with it underneath and your text looks even cooler than it did before. Next, let's do a shake animation. Open up a new composition and pull up the text tool. Again, let's write out what we wanted to say. Centered. And then we're going to go over to effects and presets and look for the wiggle position effect. Once you hit play, you can see that it shakes around and moves around, but we want this to be a lot quicker and a lot more dramatic. So let's increase the wiggle speed. Let's try eight in the amount down to around two. Now when we hit play, we see it's shaking a lot faster and it's a lot more controlled, but I want this to be even crazier. Let's bump it up to 12. Let's move around more. Let's bring this down to three. Yeah, that's looking a lot better. I want to turn on motion blur just to make the animation just a little bit cooler. Let's go ahead and add a keyframe. Go forward about a second. Add another keyframe back to the beginning and then let's just turn up that wiggle speed and that amount just to make it really crazy in the beginning yeah that's already looking awesome just kind of shakes in and then sits there and that's pretty much the animation but i think we can make this a little bit cooler let's go ahead and pre-compose this name it text 2 hit ok and then we're going to add a echo effect like how we did last time let's put out six echoes I'm gonna switch that to screen. Now when we hit play. Oh yeah, that looks a lot cooler now. And to get the same effect I did in this video, you can just add a shaky background to it and then duplicate your layer and just blur out the bottom one and it looks like it glows and it looks like it's shaking with the background. This one went pretty simple though. Let's end with a stretch animation. First, let's type out what we want our text to say. it get everything looking nice and then we're gonna go to the beginning of our timeline press s for scale drop a key from at the beginning go forward about a second and drop another one going back to the beginning we're gonna unlink the constraint properties and we're just gonna stretch it out in the beginning kind of a lot like this so that now when we hit play it stretches down i want to bring this keyframe in just a little bit closer so hit play it stretches down into what it's supposed to look like. I'm also going to pull up the rest of our controls. I'm going to go to position, go to the end, and then go back to the beginning. I'm going to bring this one down and just kind of have it go up into the animation a little bit. Let's hit play. It's looking a lot better. I'm, I think I'm going to stretch this out just a little bit more. Now let's easy ease this animation. I want to make this a little bit more punchier, so I'm going to go into the grid. On this, I'm just going to play around with the speed a little bit. Once you get to a place that you like, let's go ahead and add a echo effect. Add that on let's go about six and let's change the echo operator to screen I'm going to change the decay to round let's try, seven, let's try 75 0.75 That's looking nice already. Next, let's add a CC smear. I'm gonna add a keyframe in the beginning. I'm gonna, move, I'm gonna move this one down to about right here, forward to the end, and move this guy to the middle. Move this guy right back up to the middle. Just try to make it look normal again, as good as you can get it. Now it kind of bends into it. 
I'm gonna turn the radius up a lot and then have it just kind of even now as it gets to the top. Now it's a cool little stretch animation. And to get it looking the way I did in this, you can just add it to a cool background that you like and duplicate the layer and blur out the bottom layer to get a nice glow effect. Thank you guys so much for watching today. Hopefully you got something out of this and I'll catch you guys in the next one.